Greetings, YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you how to concentrate rubbing alcohol using nothing more than standard non-iodized table salt, aka sodium chloride. Now, rubbing alcohol goes by a few different names, including, of course, rubbing alcohol, isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, and dimethylcarbonyl. It has a chemical structure of C3H8O, or C3H7OH, or CH3CHOHCH3. It is produced via a hydration reaction of propene and water. Propene, not to be confused with propane. Propene is an alkene, which means it has double and single carbon bonds, while propane is an alkane which means it only has single carbon bonds. <coughs> oh, mm. Excuse me. Must have had something in my throat making my voice sound so deep. Oh. One second. Fancy talk aside, this process could not be simpler as all we are doing is weighing down the water in the isopropanol and water mixture using salt. Eventually, as we put enough salt in there, the water will become so dense that it will visibly separate from the isopropanol. We'll get a layer of isopropanol floating on top and a layer of salt water on the bottom. The isopropanol that's floating on top of the salt water then can be decanted or sucked off the top of the salt water and stored in a different container. And the remaining salt water then can be dried or evaporated or whatever way you want to and the salt collected and reused again for this experiment in the future. Couple of quick notes. First off, do not drink this. Just because isopropanol is an alcohol does not mean it will get you drunk. Quite on the contrary, the only real alcohol considered safe to drink is ethanol. As a matter of fact, most of the time when people get really bad hangovers after they drink is because of methanol contamination in the ethanol that they're drinking. Formaldehyde, formic acid, and formate are all produced as methanol is broken down in the body. Once again, methanol. All being toxic, they produce varying degrees of illnesses to the consumer. Now, properly distilled spirits should have very little to no methyl alcohol in them. Um, it should be pretty much just ethanol. That's why a lot of times you'll hear people say that they get worse hangovers when they drink beer, mead, or wine, which has not been distilled, so they have all of their methanol content still in there. Now, don't get me wrong, other things still do play into a hangover, such as dehydration, the toxicity of ethanol as it breaks down to your system, and vitamin and electrolyte uh, depletion in your body. So why go through all the trouble of explaining this? Well, I really want to emphasize the point of do not drink this. Even though if isopropanol, methanol, and ethanol are all alcohols, if you were to drink a shot of ethanol, you'll probably get a little bit sipsy. But if you were to drink a shot of methanol or isopropanol, you'll die in extreme pain. And the least the isopropanol will cause you to go blind. So once again, this is not for drinking, okay? Second off, you gotta make sure that you buy salt that is non-iodized. If it says anywhere on the front of it that it's iodized, then you cannot use the salt. If you're not sure, look for salt that's kosher salt or it says on the front of it, this salt does not supply iodine a necessary nutrient. If you're still unsure, you can always check the ingredients list and if anywhere on the ingredients it says that the salt contains sodium iodide or potassium iodide or any type of iodide or iodine, then you can't use it. Lastly, this process will only be able to concentrate alcohol to around its isotrope, about 95%. Any higher concentrations than that would require something like a molecular sieve in order to absorb the extra water and bring up the concentrations further. But even if you are able to concentrate the alcohol past its isotrope, if left exposed to the air, it will rapidly absorb moisture from the air and bog down its concentration again. Also, one other thing, Alcohol concentrated using this process will retain a very slight amount of salt in it, which normally wouldn't be a problem for most uses, but if you're gonna use this for an alcohol stove, it might cause a little salt residue to be left behind if you're burning it. All right, let me actually show you the process now. The simplest way I have found to do it is just a jar with a lid of some kind. Uh, this is a pickle jar. Basically, all you're gonna do is open up the jar, 
still smells a little bit like pickles, and add in the amount of isopropanol, totally not a fire hazard, the amount of isopropanol you wish to concentrate. It should be noted that you don't actually have to use a jar. You can uh, just use something and stir it, but the jar just seems to be the easiest. I'm going to say that's a good amount for what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Next, all we're going to do is take our salt, in this case I have non-iodized sea salt, and add in about one-eighth of the volume of liquid that we have currently. After we do that, we are going to take, make sure the lid's on nice and tight, not going to leak, and then just shake the jar around vigorously for a minute. Basically, all we're doing is we're, we're going to keep adding in salt until no more will dissolve. At that point, the water should be super saturated with uh, salt and way denser than the isopropanol. It will then visibly separate out. But looking at it right now, it looks like we can add in a fair bit more salt to this. So I'm going to add in about another one-eighth. You can't actually, technically speaking, add in too much salt, but, uh, you know, there's no reason to waste a bunch of salt at first if uh, you don't have to. You can do this with concentrations between 10 and 90 percent. The only thing is, though, is that the more water there is in it, the less alcohol, the more salt you're going to need to use. The salt water can be dried afterwards, though, and recollected and then used for... Um, uh, this type of thing in the future again, but uh, that's really up to you. Let's see. Uh, it will turn a little bit cloudy, but that's, yes, it's already happened. All right, I'm going to shake this, and I'm going to set it in front of this camera here, so that way you can see. So when I set it down here, what you'll see is as this settles, it might take just a second here. Yes, as you can see, there is a layer slowly creeping its way up. A very clear layer, and then on the top, it's being met with a cloudy layer. I don't know how well you can see it. Yeah, it looks like you can see it pretty good. So if I were to hold this a little bit closer to the camera, this bottom part here that you can see is salt water. This top part is concentrated isopropanol. I can pretty much just do this indefinitely. Just keep shaking and then setting it back down. It'll reseparate every time. I'm going to hold a little bit closer this time so that way you guys hopefully can see better. Once again, this doesn't need to be done in a jar. It can be done with... Um, just some type of glass and then you stir it around or anything like that. It's uh, really quite versatile. You can do it, uh, so all you need is some isopropanol and some salt. Now you don't actually have to do this, but I'm going to do it as a visual aid of sorts. And I'm going to add in just a few drops of food coloring to sh show the difference between the, uh, the layer densities. And this shouldn't really hurt my isopropanol at all. But if you look right here, grab this camera. If you look right here, the food coloring is a lot less dense than the salt water. So it wants to float on top of it, just like the isopropanol does. This will change though, as soon as I take it and I shake it around a bit. So, I'm going to set you back right here. And if I now simply just take this, cap it again. Like I said, you can see that it wants to stay separated because the salt water is a lot denser than the food coloring. But if I mix it together by shaking it, this will basically cause the food coloring to become around the same density as the salt water. But if we let it sit again, like so, you'll notice a different effect, which is pretty cool, which is the distinctive 
color differences between the um, isopropanol and the isopropanol and the uh, food coloring and the salt water in the food coloring. So as you can see, the food coloring that has dissolved in the salt water is a very vivid blue, while the food coloring that is dissolved in the isopropanol is more purple. And I did use purple food coloring, so it is kind of interesting how the colors separate like that. There's not really much else to it. All I need to do now is just uh, pour off this top layer of isopropanol into a different container. I'm just gonna do this real quick to uh, wash all the salt off the side of the jar. So I'm going to get a different container real quick. All right, so as I mentioned prior, you can literally just unscrew this and very gently decant or pour off the isopropanol layer into a different container like so. Or my more preferred method is to use something like a syringe and very carefully extract the layer off the top. And the reason is is because you get less of the um, you get less of the uh, isopropanol spilling everywhere and there's less chance of you accidentally sucking up the salt water and contaminating it. Um, once again, the food coloring is not necessary. It does really help you see the difference between the two layers though. It might make separating them easier, but uh, I mean it's really up to you. Now you really want to minimize contamination chances. If you leave like 5% of the alcohol on top, it really should stop you from uh, chance sucking up any salt water. Well, one of the great things about syringes too though, is that if by chance I were to suck up some salt water, so like I'm gonna really get to the edge here and I were to suck up some salt water in here. So you can see my syringe has turned quite purple. If I just let it sit like I normally would for the isopropanol in the jar, you'll see that it separates into two distinctive layers again. I'm probably gonna have to let this sit for 30 seconds or so before it actually uh, separates into two very clear layers. I can see it starting. So with this now, we can see that I sucked up quite a bit of um, salt water in here. But being a syringe and the fact that the salt water is heavier than the isopropanol, I can literally just take it and squeeze right on out all that salt water and just leave behind the isopropanol and then add it to whatever. This jar is already pretty much full. But that's all there is to it. To concentrate isopropanol, rubbing alcohol, with nothing more than non-iodized table salts. You've seen it all here. Uh, it's pretty much live. Um, it works great, and like I said, the food coloring can work as very good as a visual instructor. I'm actually surprised at how much of a color difference there was uh, between the purple and blue. That was actually really pleasantly nice. When I did it with green, it was more of like a dark green and then a lighter green, but this this is really quite drastic. So uh, I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already, and feel free to drop me a comment below, which I usually try and reply to if I have the... Uh, the time or if it's something in specific that uh, you know worth replying to not no offense to anyone but you know sometimes we were like yo this video is it's cool dogs I really likes it and you did good job mates and I'm just kind of like okay thanks I don't know what to say back
But anyways, um, if you guys enjoy this video, if you want to support my Patreon to help uh, fund future videos like this, I already have a couple of awesome Patreons. I'd like to thank you guys so much for that. But if you want to support my Patreon, uh, you can check the video link description below. There'll be uh, a link that just says link to my Patreon and you can click it. You basically just donate monthly. There's also support my channel option if you guys are interested in that. But if you're not interested in giving me any money for any specific reason, I still appreciate your viewership. Thank you guys very much for watching, and bye.